doing is tiny enough. Here we are in the Echidna enc uh, enclosure at Cleveland. There's a plane going overhead, but because we're near the airport as well. And here's an echidna laying out in the sun. All the animals are laying out in the sun because it's the first sunny day in spring. And look at this, if you look closely, you can see his little leg hanging out the back there. That's his leg. And they burrow. Never seen one like that. I have once before, only once before have I seen an echidna. I'd love to see one in real but life. They lay eggs, well there's one in real well, life. I mean like as in, in, <laughs> in, in, in nature. Like come across one in I'd love to see platypus in nature. Oh, yeah. Even rarer still. He's so gorgeous. Okay. So what we're looking at here is there's a flock of cockies or Major Mitchell silver crested cockatoos they have the yellow crests when they put it up and behind them are Cape Barren geese a flock of them and then of course there are kangaroos and wallabies darted around the hillside as well magpies and Gotta say, it's pretty damn glorious here today. Little ducks there. Spring has sprung and in a big way. Four miles ahead of me. Which is nothing unusual because <laughs> I'm always filming. Hello, ducky. Quack, 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 Cute. I wish you could smell what I could smell. Grass and the, and the eucalyptus. And the gum trees. The wood. There's a cocky screeching in the background. That's a very Australian thing to do, is to grab a stick for when you go walking. Oh, another kangaroo there. Isn't that wonderful? Good exercise. Great for the senses. Excellent for the soul. Thank you. Look at this track we're about to go. This is the bushland that I'm talking about. I mean, this is Australia, look. <laughs> God, I know, I sound like Steve Irwin. Yeah, hello. No, you sound like a knob. <laughs> Steve Knob here. This is Australia. Because yes, you're in Australia, isn't it? Couldn't be anything else when you're in Australia. 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 Yeah, that's how you say Australia. 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 Yeah. Not Australia. No. Oh, you Aussies. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they're back from the brink with a little pot of roof. common, the brush-tailed Ben Betog is now locally extinct throughout areas of its former range. Clearance of native vegetation predation from foxes and cats, competition from rabbits, and altered fire regimes have threatened the species. Reintroduction programs such as the ARC on the IRB program have re-established the bush-tailed betong on a number of offshore islands and mainland national parks, averting potential extinction of the species. And you know what? I've just spied. What? Through there. An ant mound. A pile of... Could be a termite mound. Yeah. Termites. Isn't that amazing? Nice. Turn that one around. Little bits of wattle. That's the paddock we were just in. 
climb every mountain. Was a lonely goat herd, lady, old lady, old lady. I was waiting for you to finish it. <laughs> well, you think they should pave it? <laughs> I love the moss and stuff at the bottom of the trees. And these, uh, this is just magic. I'll shut up so you can hear. Mallee trees. Mallee wood makes really good driftwood. Get, you get lots of really nice shapes and stuff from Mallee wood. And when, uh, in winter, when you have a log fire, Mallee wood and red gum, especially red gum is beautiful when you smell it in an open fire. Wow, look at these ant, ant holes. Well, I presume they're ant holes. <laughs> they're bloody big ant holes if they are. There's my shoe. Oh my God. Could be anything, could be snake holes for all I know. Maybe marsupial mice live in them. What are you doing poking it with a stick? Mally stump. Mally stump, yes. I was just explaining to the viewers yeah. how good Mallee stumps and Mallee wood, oh. when it hits uh, the water, it looks really good as a decorative piece in a fireplace. Like there's a good example of a Mallee stump, and that's not even with the water. 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 It's another very Aussie thing to say, water. Water. The kookaburras, they stopped as soon as I started filming. Just a little laugh from the kookaburras. They're in the trees there, somewhere where we've just been. Hopefully I'll catch them laughing. Sound like they're a little way away over that hill there. It's very easy to get lost. I mean, Paul's ahead on the track somewhere, and I don't know where. We've already got lost within here, within this forest, and it's a very small contained area. Can you imagine if you were in the bush before there were fences, you wouldn't know where, where to go. Head towards the sun, so that means Adelaide is down the hill and over there. So we finally made it down to the emu enclosure. Emus can be quite aggressive birds, so like with kangaroos, they're cute until they get nasty. <laughs> and they, they make a gurgling sound. Hello emu, how are you? They're so nice to feed. They sort of do it from the side, don't they? Yeah. Look at you, look at your eyes. Let me see your eyes. Down the hatch. Hey, bloop, bloop. You want to see, you want some of mine, don't you? Alright, I'll give you some. 
Be nice, it's coming. All right, here you go. Oh, you bit my fucking hand. Ah, <laughs> oh, you fucking bastard. <laughs> Hold it out. Yeah, but I didn't. He, he grabbed hold of the flesh on my fingers. Oh, nice. Bastard. He thought they were sausages. <laughs> <laughs> Emus don't eat sausages. And my fingers don't look like sausages. <laughs> That's my best friend. <laughs> says my emus look like sausages. No. Four o'clock in the afternoon, I'm on top of the hillside, and if you can see, if I zoom in, maybe you'll see down there is Adelaide, and then beyond that is the beach. So, this is where we are, overlooking Adelaide. But, we're amongst the emus. I've just been feeding them, I didn't like my my uh, emu feeding experience because he bit my hand. It wasn't that bad, it wasn't, you know, I was being a bit dramatic, but you know how it is. Oh, look, Paul's over there with the mopper kangaroos. They're the kangaroo island kangaroos, they're very pretty. They've got chocolate faces. I'd have to go and have a look. Okay, we're being very quiet because we're in the nocturnal house, and right here. There's some little marsupial mice, and they're very quick, so it's going to be hard for me to catch them. And they're very small. There's a the mother and the babies in the corner. She's feeding all the babies. Then there's little mice running around everywhere. They look different to normal mice. They're very fast, they have longer tails. A bit like a cross between a possum and a kangaroo, only in miniature. And they're so cute. And they, I don't know if you can hear them making their little <coughs> noise. They're gorgeous. Watching stuff.